How did I get so obsessed with storytelling? This is um, a picture from uh, Marrakesh in Morocco. I spent a long time travelling um, overseas, about eight years, an eight-year period where I left Australia and didn't come back for eight years. And one of the places I, I lived in and stayed in was, was northern Africa and around Morocco. And in Marrakesh, where it's stinking hot all day, at night time it cools down a bit. And this is, this is Jamar Jam Al which is like a, a piazza, like a square in the middle of the city. And in the daytime, it's a thoroughfare. There's just roads and traffic and whatever. At night time, all these uh, kitchens are the kitchen carts are wheeled in, and all the souks open up, and it becomes this heaving mass of humans. It's just amazing, and the smells and the noise and everything is like it's as northern African as you can get. It's so good. And in amongst all this crowd, there's people who uh, are snake charmers and acrobats and buskers and like all this crazy stuff. And then. There's three or four or five really, really old dudes who are storytellers. What they do is stand up on a milk crate and tell stories. For, for money, you know, for coins or whatever, but that's their job. And they're so old. And, and like the thing about them is they're the last four or five people who are keeping this ancient art of storytelling alive in Northern Africa. And eventually they, they won't live. Although the guy that I sat in front of and, and listened to a story, he, he must have been about 118 or something. He looked like Gandalf telling me stories, but he was so old. But he was so engaging. I sat in front of this guy on the first night I was there. And I sat in front of him for about two and a half hours. And he told story after story after story. About five minute short stories. And some of them were sad. Some of them were happy. And some of them were proud. And some of them were like, suspenseful and tragic. And, and this went on for ages. There was a group like this in front of him who were listening. And they were crying. And we were all like, upset. And we were all happy. And I was happy. And it was amazing, right? Just the most immersive, fantastic storytelling I've ever, ever experienced. And he was speaking Arabic, and I didn't speak any Arabic. And he didn't speak any English. And yet, he held my, not only my gaze, but held my attention with this storytelling for two and a half hours in a different language. And I remember thinking, shit, if this guy can do this in Arabic to me, we have no excuse why we can't communicate with our customers and our market and our community and our country in our own language and do a better job of our storytelling than we do. If we can't keep someone's attention for the length of a TBC in English and this guy can tell me stories for two and a half hours in Arabic, it's not good enough. We're not trying hard enough.